G'day guys and welcome back. A little bit different this one. We are finally going to get to do a bit of a walk around of our caravan. In in internal, external. Yeah, just what we like, what we don't like. Just the build basically. It's a, uh, it's a Brilliant Caravan. That's the name of the company, Brilliant. They're a manufacturer out of Melbourne and uh, 18 foot, full off road. So let's get into it. actually be showing where it'll fit in to our, uh, our episodes on the road probably just entering Queensland sometime so might actually have to do this in a few cuts because it is cooking I might need to spray some water on my face at times but uh, yeah let's get into this caravan we'll do the external first and just show you around the thing when I did plan to do this so it's gonna be a nice clean caravan we're gonna have everything tidy in that but then it's hard to do it's hard to keep clean Yesterday we were driving through river crossings and everything like that. It's not easy to find water all the time. It's not even to find a car wash. Easy. It's not easy to find a car wash. Um, and to be honest, this is what it's looking like most of the time anyway. Same with everything under the mat. Everything else. It's just how how it is on the road. How you live. So start of it. We have got an extended drawbar on 18 foot uh, uh, chassis. So this is a silver line chassis. Apparently it's been oh it's out of the same factory as the GNS. Probably, well, the reason we didn't get GNS was because it was going to mean a two month delay on our build and we had a time frame that we had to meet. So as far as the caravan manufacturer is concerned, it's same quality, same everything, same uh, factory, just a different name. I don't know why they do that, but that's what it is. We got an extended drawbar on the 18 foot van, single axle I should say off the top as well. Um, it is probably as big as you'd want to ever go on a single axle, in, in fact, it probably puts a little bit too much ball weight for me, for my liking. So we're very conscious of what we put at the front of the van here. So um, extended drawbar because we've got the stone guard. Now we don't have stone stompers or anything like that. At the moment, we've been in and out of track. We've done some tracks in, well, where? Kangaroo Island, York Peninsula. Um, yes, more right. recently, Bloomfield track. We've been around parts of Cape York and everything. So. We've, we've found it to be fine. Got a little bit of damage here. That's for me jackknifing in Tassie pretty early in the trip when we couldn't, we got too tight a turn. Um, but yeah, so extended drawbar, which adds weight, which adds length to the van. Um, it's, but it works. It means you're not, you're not tight on those turning circles. So um, up front here, got the trailer mate, uh, Jack. We had that replaced uh, as soon as, uh, as soon as we got the van. The old wind up ones, we were taking our, our, our hands or our knuckles, skin off our knuckles basically, um, winding it up against the, the mesh on this. So we've got that, I've got a bit of love-hate relationship with this. It does uh, it does lock in sometimes, and then all of a sudden, not, not while we're on it, just when we're jacking it up or jacking down, um, putting it onto the car, taking off the car. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great, just the pump action basically. I won't do it here, because we've still got our stabilizers down. Um, and about 400 bucks, I think. Got the Kovex lock uh, for the tow hitch, basically there. It's alarmed, so you can chuck that on. Simple, put the key in there, it pops up through the, um, through the middle. We used to put one of the chains through there as well, because you could theoretically chuck the chains on the tow and drag it off if you wanted to, if you were that, uh, that keen on stealing something. But it's just peace of mind more than anything for us. Um, <clears throat> 
just while we're talking, just while we're at the start of the video, I guess, talking about weights. So, as I said, the toe ball is probably a little bit heavier for what I like. It's right at the max of what um, what we can basically tow with. So it's about 295. Uh, I think we can go up to 310 on the Triton. Um, and it, it's it's probably one of them things that I'm always thinking about. And we've, we've changed a few things up here and there on um, on the drawbar to try and suit that as, as we sort of go. Um, 295 that, our tear is 2,040 kilos. So just over two ton. And our ATM, uh, fully loaded, is up to 2,700. Now, the Silverline chassis says 2,700. Our compliant plate says 2,800. I don't know why that is again, but um, it, we, we, we stick with the 2,700 just for peace of mind again. So, um, yeah. Moving on, two nine kilo gas bottles. We've got a two-way compressor fridge inside, which we'll show you later, but um, these guys, we probably what, go through them once every, what, two months? Uh, one bottle every two months. Uh, and just been getting them refilled up, mainly for aesthetics, I guess. Uh, we did order a toolbox when we built the van, uh, but when we picked it up, it wasn't there, and we're like, what's going on? Uh, and they, they just literally couldn't fit it, but they didn't tell us about it. Um, so I had this custom made. It is uh, skinny and wide, basically, and tall. So it's only one door on this side because we've got the diesel heater on the other side, and while I'm talking about the diesel heater, it is a cheap Chinese brand. We used it a few times in um, in Victoria before we left when, left when we were checking or uh, sussing the van out, I guess. Um, but it works. Will turned it on yesterday by accident as he's playing around with buttons, which is the first time we've had it on in probably six months. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I can't put a door on this side. So we've got one big, long, skinny... Uh, Big long skinny toolbox, which you just got to be careful what you're putting over the far side because it's very hard to get in and get it. So, um, but that that houses all that dirty stuff. It, it's our cords, electrical uh, pipe uh, pipes, hoses for um, drinking and also for uh, sullage. Uh, it's got chainsaw in there. It's got um, drip pan or whatever drip tray for changing your oil. Just anything that's kind of dirty kind of fits in there. So. Um, it doesn't seal real well and the very first day we had it on the trip we shoved something up against this lock inside and couldn't actually get it undone um, so it's not necessarily watertight or uh, dust tight at the moment which we don't care because it's all dirty stuff all right moving around here um, we've got a big long tunnel boot going through there to be honest as I said we're kind of conscious what we put up the front, in front of the chassis, uh, in front of the um, the axle, just because of that ball weight. And to be honest, the longer the trip goes on, the less we need. So, um, basically in this whole tunnel boot, and I'll show you the other side later, we have a Ziggy with, I think it's just a King's uh, fridge slide. Ziggy with a, a bit of Ziggy gear in there. Um, it's got some extra grill stuff and everything that we can chuck on there for indirect cooking. Um, but the Ziggy, because it's got the, the fully flippable lid, Weber didn't fit. And we found it actually really good. So um, it cooks well, it cooks really hot. Um, you can, you can kind of get the flames going to give a bit of flame grill as well. And then I've just got a, I think they're called off-road direct. That's it there, it's not the most stable thing, but it just helps me out to cook some other stuff in there. Other than that, in that tunnel boot, we've got Eva's surfboard, which is currently over there because she's swimming in the dam with it. Um, yesterday, and we put the, the table, uh, which is a Coleman fold-up table. Again, it's pretty lightweight for what it is. It does the job. I don't mind sitting in these, these sort of bench seats, whereas Trent is more the, um, the fold-up chairs. But that's all we've got in there. Like, it's literally empty other than a big surfboard, basically, um, on the other side, I mean and a Ziggy on this side. So as I said, Lego's out because the Lego is always out basically. Kids love playing with it. They actually play well together with it. They're creative. Uh, Mum and Dad get involved sometimes as well. So uh, on this side of the van, we've got obviously door, step. We use one of these collapsible um, stools because sometimes you can be up a bit higher. So we, we put that on the mat there as well. So Will doesn't have this massive step to get out basically. But the Mac Mac there, we won't go inside yet, we've got another muck mac up there. 
they tend to do the job uh, collecting a lot of the, the sand and dust. We've also got the Sea Gear Multi Mat, which is awesome. The kids love picking which colour, whether we have the green side up or the grey side up. Grey side up. But the sand basically falls through them. It's a little bit dirty now because it was wet this morning uh, on the grass, and then we just track the mud back through. But once that dries, you just give it a rub, and all that'll just fall through basically. So um, it's simple, it's easy. I think we've pegged it down maybe twice on the whole trip, otherwise, we just leave it down and it stays down. So um, moving over, if I could have more of this table, or if I could have it indented into the wall like I've seen on some vans, I would. I love this. Tally's out here because it's always out here. I was watching the footy here last night, having a few beers. Um, it's just nice to be outside if you're going to watch something like that. And people will be like, oh, why are you watching TV when you're camping? Well, this is our life for this year. So you've got to have some things that make it feel normal. Um, and that's just a simple one. Connect up to Starlink, which we've got on the roof. I'll show you later as well. Um, it just plugs into the 12 volt there. We've got a couple of outlets for USBs there. Um, and the 240 volt up the top there. Pretty standard sort of stuff. Um, but I do love this table. I wish I could fit another one somewhere, um, but not to be. So, speakers, we don't use them. There's a FM radio inside as well. I think it's a CD player, but it's one of them things that we, we didn't question at the start when we were building the van. Uh, and I should say, we, we picked this van up in 2000, July 2022, so a year ago, less than a year ago, basically. Um, and yeah, from Brilliant, in Melbourne, an hour and a half away from where we live in Torquay. We went back to the factory a few times, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, it's the Overlander model with two bunks inside. It's got the laundry, sorry, the shower and the ensuite as well. I think it was the very first model they actually built of this, so, um, and they've made a few improvements. And while I'm talking about them, because we're on this side, my biggest bugbear, which Trina doesn't really seem to care too much about, is these three windows, mainly that window at the front of the van and this window here, they're just tiny. They're so tiny. So to get any airflow on that, th that through makes it really hard. Um, but also when we're laying in bed, uh, to look out the window, it's really, you can't see much. It's like you're on a cruise ship basically. Um, I know for, for a fact that they've changed this window on the, the models that they've built after this, just to have a bigger one. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, Kind of one of the things um, we wish we could have done differently, or I wish I could have done differently. While we're out here, uh, look at this. Um, where's the sign? I love, I love the awning. I love how easy it is. It is a sunburst eclipse by Aussie Traveller. I can put this up by myself in about three minutes, including um, all the tie downs and everything like that. It is so simple. Again, the kids love, love. Um, helping out with it but yeah we can do it by myself uh, for this part we've also got the anti-flap uh, what do you call them what would you call that tie downs, tie -downs uh, which we didn't have at the start of the trip and I know you can get anti-flap kits which are the big poles that go across and everything like that but for a cheap solution these are one of the best pieces of the kit I reckon you can add if you've got an awning this style because the flap there then creates vibrations all through the poles it goes back against the wall and while you might be sitting out here you can see the thing moving that vibration there inside is almost deafening and you're like oh my god we're going to take off this thing's going to go back over the caravan which we've seen on a couple of caravans already on on the trip um but yeah i love how simple it is while we're here um we've got another two two of my favorite pieces of kit on the whole van the tie gear which i think i've actually got this inverted but just having, oh, there's a big moth there. Having the, um, what's this, the, the spring around the barrel makes it really easy to put on. And then you're basically tidying it. You've got the ground dog anchors down the bottom, which are drill in with a 19 mil bit. Same as your, your wheel nuts, same as your stabilizer legs. So it's all very simple, very easy. But for these, all I do, you just basically You lift this up, and that loosens it, and all I'm doing to tighten it, once the, it's connected to the carabiner down the bottom on the ground dog, it's just pulling it tight. Giving a little bit of extension through that, so it's nice and tight. You can fold them up, which I was doing at the start of the trip, but it's just one of them things that I can't be bothered with anymore. So, um, the other thing we're right here, 
this is I think I think it's a trip and a van fix um, with the clothesline. Again, love hate relationship. It is so simple and so easy. A um, couple of quick little fixes up there, up here with the the D bolts or the D D rings, D shackles, whatever you call them. And then you got that to tighten at this end. Um, I love hate relationship with it because it's easy. You can just chuck the towels on there. You can chuck anything on there, but they're always on there as well because you're always swimming, you're always doing something. So really, when you're sitting under here, it always takes away from your view. Um, we're set up at a bigger site at the moment, so we've got all that stuff out there, we can sit out there. But if you're sitting under here away from the sun, it just gets a bit tiresome looking at, um, looking at towels, looking at dirty washing, Chinese laundry, whatever you call it. So uh, that's kind of it around this side. Um, the other thing I'll, I guess I'll say, I'm gonna turn around this side. Trina's filming by the way, sort of um, the cameraman. All small, so we've got a few of these throughout the van. So we've got a couple up this end. They just stuck on with silicon, so they stay there the whole time. We've got one underneath the table here, as I'm walking through spider webs. And we've got another one up on, on that end as well. So I didn't want to put too many on that end because that's kind of our main walkway in and out. And the more I stick on, the more laundry Trina finds. I don't want to be walking through dirty jocks and or wet jocks through there all the time. Um, the only other door on this side that I haven't spoken about, that's our old cassette uh, door, which we don't need anymore because we've got the composting toilet. So um, com composting toilet, by far the best thing that we've done to the van since we picked it up. Um, by far, like the length of the Flemington straight, basically. It is so good. We've changed it twice, uh, once in 150 days, I think. Um, 160 days almost now, so. About time to go again, so anyway, we'll move her on onto the back of the van. All right, so around the back, it is a bit busy. Um, and again, that's been us shuffling things around to get stuff off the uh, off the drawbar at the front from a tow ball point of view. Um, and this is probably excessive, basically. We do have three anchor points underneath for the, the, the rear bar. What's that called? Tail, I can't remember what's, rear, rear drawbar we'll call it. There is three anchor points, so from a weight point of view, uh, it should be enough, or it has been enough for quite some time now to hold the spare tire. Um, we've got some plywood in there and the drifter bag. We've got the PM canvas gear. This, these guys are out of Perth. Um, amazing what you can fit in this. Like it's it's so, I don't know what I've got anything in the moment. It's huge, like Trina could fit in there basically if she wanted to, or if I accidentally knocked her off one night. Um, bad thing to say. But then you've got a couple of big, um, couple of big storage pockets on the side, all zips, all, it's just quality product. And it, it connects perfectly to this. Um, the tire cover is included in that as well. Then we've got the Grip Sport dual bike carrier. Um, it's heavy, it's about 25 kilos for that one. It's got one of the fat tire attachments and one of the normal attachments. Um, Eva and I just love riding the bikes around. It, from a, from a from a kid's point of view, it's a great way for the kids to make friends. Uh, and then when they have made friends, it's a great way for them to, to just explore with their friends, basically. And for me, I've used my, my, my e-bike. I've used it to explore. I've used it to, to just feel that sort of freedom, I guess, um, on our trip. But also I collect firewood the other day. Um, I've used it to go to the bottle hole and get a, a 30 block just chuck it on the back, just anything, just to duck in, not have to drive somewhere, not have to find a park, um, or just get up tight tracks that uh, are a bit far to walk. So, um, it, 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 it's not something that you need, but it's something that I love. Under here we've got the outdoor shower, uh, hot and cold in there. I don't think we need it. I think we've used it maybe twice in Tassie. Uh, and that was an added extra that we, we put on. Uh, Trina, we only talked about it that day. Trina reckoned she'd use it if we were camping out in the cold or in the cold water again. Uh, we usually have a hose that connects from our draw bar tap um, that I run over to this side next to the barbecue. We use that all the time. I use that to wash my hands when I'm cooking. Um, use it to cool down. There's a little tiny quick two second shower. Kids washing the, the sand off the feet. I think that is more than enough compared to the, um, the outdoor shower here. I just don't like the, the spot of that either. Uh, I know you've got to get it away from where you live because you don't want big, big, big wet patches. But for our setup and what we're doing, chasing the sun, I don't want that. I don't need it, basically. Uh, got a couple of jerry can holes on the back. So just from a weight point of view, um, 
these are fuel and I've got two on the back of my car that I've got for water. I tend not to, whatever I'm carrying on the back of the caravan here, I tend not to have full. Um, it's usually I have one water, one fuel extra or two waters or two fuel. And whatever I've got full usually sits in the back of the car. It's just, it's just another 40 kilos that I'm adding to the back of this, which I've already got a lot of weight on. That's more just a place to store them basically. So, uh, we've got the safety dive reversing cam up there, which um, again, just good for peace of mind when you're reversing, but also when you're um, driving along, it just gives you a little bit better visual than the, um, the clear view mirrors that I've got on the, on the car as well which you can still see around, but that lets you see straight out the back. All right, so moving around this side, we've got a couple of little monkeys in here, watching a bit of iPad. We've bribed them in there, so they've, they've got, I don't know what they're watching, but something. Um, we've got some external storage underneath their bunk. So pretty empty at the moment. They've got a, a bit of toys there, um, but the fire pit, the Osbry compact grill will sit there as well as um, our 200 watt solar panel from iTech. So while we're talking solar on the roof there, if you come back over this way, Trina, so I'm not gonna sit. On the roof, we've got two times 210 watt solar. Uh, so 420 in total plus a 200 watt blanket, so 620. Um, look, it's, it's not much in today's world, but it certainly does the job for us. There are times when it's overcast and shady um, that we do struggle. We probably get three days at most if it's continued like that. And we've, we've run into trouble uh, in the Barossa having both those. But if it's one or the other, if it's, if it's cloudy or shady, we can tend to get by most of the time. So um, we actually wanted more put on the roof when we were building, but there was no real estate up there. So. Um, yeah, so I'll chuck the fire pit in there as well as a solar blanket. And then they've got some toys which they can access from the inside as well. So, uh, gas, water, heater there basically. We've got these two things because we upgraded the lithium battery um, during the build and these were already on. They're welded on so they're not easy to get off but they're used for nothing um, at the moment. The two vents here. Two vents for the um, the fridge. Again, we upgraded the, the fridge from a three-way to a two-way compressor. Um, it just lets a bit of that heat come out, basically, so the, the fridge is not always running hot. Uh, we've got the AC in, obviously, um, for mains, and just the, the safety switch there. We've got water tanks. So underneath, we've got two, um, two 90 liter water tanks. So they sit, first one is here, at the front, if I can, in there, that's the grey water, and then at the back, we've got the second one as well. So this is while well, I'm under there. This is full, full independent off-road suspension as well um, on the single axle, and we've got the grey water outlet here. I don't like that. It's just a big chunky thing waiting for to get smashed off, um, and we actually lost there. The handle on it uh, somewhere on Udindato or Kupiti or something as well. So give this back to mum. <coughs> so up the front, this is the other side of the barbecue one. So we shove the the table in there and uh, either surfboard, and that's all that lives in there basically. Oh, and the tra and the trailer mate jack um, when we store that when we're moving. This one. So this is a little bit funny, I think. Um, this is under bed storage as a second um, second tunnel boot, but it does, it's like, not really a tunnel. It's, it's, it, it just stops kind of halfway down the bed. Um, it's kind of a junk, junk spot. Again, we don't have anything massively heavy in there. We've got a camp oven, uh, some shade sails, a blower, um, and then just shoes, gum boots, just nothing too exciting really. And that's, that's basically it from the externals. So we've, we've been, when we first bought this caravan, um, we had all sorts of issues with our battery management system. We'll show that on the internals as well. Um, but we did have a BM Pro 
35, HA35, I think it was. Um, and we were losing connectivity with the Bluetooth, which was going to our, um, our display unit to show us how much we actually had. And it was constantly dropping out. So we, we couldn't check on how much power, how much water, how much anything we had. Uh, and was back and forth at the factory. BM Pro were blaming Brilliant. Brilliant were blaming BM Pro. Um, and we were doing our heads in basically because the, the time before us starting our trip was getting smaller and smaller. And we didn't want to go off grid um, without that sort of fix. So we eventually got to the point where they said, hey, what do you want? We got projector, we've got something else. So we, we swapped that over for a projector system. Uh, and haven't had a has yeah, it? it's been great ever since yeah. we put it in which has been really good because we were super worried that it wasn't going to be reliable This is our house for a year. So we wanted it to be good, I guess. Yeah, and while we're talking about that we've got 240 lithium Amp hours in this uh, in this again. It's not a lot, but it, it does the job for us There are times where I do trainers head in because I'm saying hey, what's the, what's the percentage? What, what are we doing type thing? Um, but for what we're just used to it and and going on from that um, Whatever you get like this is 18 foot and we'll show you inside as well um, We might even have to split it into two episodes just to do inside and outside because uh, I Don't want you sitting there for, for hours on end while I while I blab away, but um, You get used to whatever you whatever you got yeah. Like for Every, us. Everyone says like with the bigger vans, they're <clears> like, you know, it suits them. This suits us. I don't know. I think you just it works for you. Yeah. There's an adjustment period. Like there's a like you're going from a house or whatever you live in at home into a caravan. Now that's never easy, especially when you got kids as well. Uh, it's an adjustment for us, but um, there is an adjustment of that four six week period where you're like, oh, we can't do this. We're on top of each other. You can't yeah. move. You're always in each other's way. Yeah. And then after a while, it just becomes your normal. It becomes your new normal. Yeah. Um, there's certainly things that I wish I had different or bigger or that sort of thing. But at the same time, this is what we've got and yeah. this is what we're used to now. Like it's. And we love it. Like you set it up in like 10, 15 minutes and we've got set up down pat. So it just feels, I don't know, it's super easy. You pull up and your house is done basically. Yeah. And, and in saying that, People are doing the same thing in their tents. People are doing the same thing in, in camper trailers. They're doing it in massive motorhomes. They're doing it everywhere, basically. And uh, everyone's just as happy as us. Yeah. Like, they're all absolutely loving life. So it doesn't matter what your setup is. Camping in the same spots as us. Exactly. Um, it doesn't It doesn't matter. Just get out there and, and get on the road. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about outside? Uh... Oh, oh, just on the, on the roof. So we've got Starlink up the top there. I've got a rooftop mount. Um, I might even crawl in and show you how I do that before I go. So inside here, through the, the skylight, I climb up every time and disconnect the dish from this pivot mount. I can't really sort of film it too well because I don't have a lot of real estate to work with with my head poking out. But that the top pole part and the dish pops off and I pull the cord and everything in. And then the cord runs down, down the front of the caravan, back under here where I've, I've drilled a hole and that goes back into an internal cupboard uh, inside, our, inside our caravan. Um, and just, it just makes it easy without having to run cords like I currently am at the moment for the electricity. Um, I was just trying to use some of the cars, uh, cars power rather than the caravan today. Um, rather than running things through the door because they do get jammed, the lock sort of mechanism sort of fails and so that kind of works for us. And then I've got this big screw thing. It's just irrigation um, that I screw onto the bottom of that as well. And uh, that's how we sort of run our Starlink. The other thing I'll sort of show you on the outside, which I'll show you more on the inside as well, our external um, hose or outlet for, uh, it's, it's like a SOG for the compost, but all compost come with them. So the 12 volt runs a fan over the top of the, the stinky stuff. And then the hose runs through the floor and comes out here. So um, I think that's basically, basically everything from the external point of view. Um, we've also got the Ziggy is the Ziggy Nomad with the flame out feature 
I don't think it's any different from the old Ziggy before that that didn't have the feature. But now that it is regulation, um, that you can't actually have that connected to your caravan unless you've got that flame out feature. They just got higher price point than the normal Ziggy. Um, but it does mean I can have the bayonet uh, connection underneath, connected straight in. In saying that, the Ziggy is not, not fitted or anything like that, so I can move it around depending on how the wind is and everything like that. But yeah, that's the caravan from the outside. Trina has run away because an excavator just ran past, so we wanted to see that. So I might wrap it up there. Like, comment, subscribe. Give me, give me anything about what you, what you uh, want to question. If you are going through the stages, or early stages of, of planning a caravan or buying a caravan and what you think you might need. Um, and we can tell you whether we think it's a good idea or not. So anyway, here they come now. Good job, mate. Anyway, Mum, wrapping this one up here. Stay tuned. I don't know whether it'll be next week or whenever it might be for the internal, which we might get Mum having a bit more of a, an input in since she... Well, that means I have to clean up, which I don't do. Whatever. Anyway, brilliant 18-foot off-road single axle van, extended drawbar. Goes all right. Yeah, we love it. A surprise that with you I feel alive.